All right, we are going to talk about absolute extrema in the candidates test, which I am telling you is one of the most important things. It has been on the AP free response for every year. I guarantee you there will be a question in some form or fashion on the free response. Well, you will have to use this. And so very, very important topic. Last unit, we were justifying, remember, local extremes, local max and mins, which we use the first derivative test. But what happens if you're finding the absolute extrema? So absolute, of course, means the absolute uh, highest point or lowest point. So if you look at these graphs, you can see that there's no absolute max or min here. because you have arrows that are going up forever and down forever, so there's no absolute max or min. This particular graph has an absolute max, but no absolute min. This particular graph, here's an absolute max, and does it have an, a lowest point? Yes, right here, that's gonna be an absolute min. And what about that last one? Definitely has an absolute max, but notice the open circle, so that doesn't count into anything. Obviously, you have to have a point to be an absolute max or min, and open circles don't count. So what have we kind of noticed about where the absolute max or mins occur? And I could have drawn a picture that was like this, and that would have an absolute max. So I want to be I want to make a statement that's true for everything. An absolute extrema will occur at either a critical point or at an endpoint. An absolute extrema will occur at a critical point and remember hopefully you remember what a critical point is. A critical point is where the first derivative is either zero or undefined, or at an endpoint. And what the extreme value theorem says, I mean, think, extreme values. So it's gonna be talking about extreme at maxes and mins. If you have a function that is continuous on a particular interval, on a, notice, a closed, this is a closed interval, okay? If f is continuous on that closed interval, then F will have both a maximum and a min. Really an absolute max and minimum. And that's what we're going to be finding. We are going to be finding the absolute max and the absolute mins of these particular functions. So let's look at a problem. The problem says find the absolute extrema for that function on that particular interval. Friends, when you see the word, and you might not see the word absolute, but if you, if you do, we'll talk about it in word problems on free response, how they kind of disguise it a little bit. But if, you, if you're looking for the absolute max or the absolute min and you have a closed interval, I want you to think of the candidate's test. Okay, absolute extrema, closed interval. Equal, I mean, that tells you, okay, then I'm gonna do the candidate's test. Now, what is the candidate's test? Well, the candidate's test is saying this. It's using this idea. If you have a critical point and you have I mean, if you have an absolute extrema, then it's gonna either occur at a critical point or an endpoint. So a critical point is where the first derivative is positive, excuse me, where the first derivative is zero or undefined. And so I have to find those places. So let's do that. So it kind of resembles what you have done in the past. Notice on my paper, I label all functions, just like I did last unit. So the first derivative here is 12x to the third minus 12x squared. And then I need to see where that equals zero. So 
I'll just set that equal to zero. I'll show that. So 12x squared, that's going to be x minus 1. So f prime is equal to 0 at x equals 0 and 1. Now, you don't necessarily have to write this, f prime never undefined. I only write it so that I get in the habit of looking for it because a lot of people, again, with, with critical uh, points, they forget looking where the derivative is undefined. So if you, you, you write it down, you might think of it. You don't have to write it down if you promise you'll think of it. But notice this is where the change occurs because I'm not doing a sign analysis. What I'm saying are, look, this guy's going to have absolute extrema because of the extreme value theorem. It's a closed interval. You have a continuous function. It's going to have an absolute max or a min. What I'm saying is that the candidates where those maxes and mins occur are either going to be at 0 and 1, the critical points, or at the endpoints. So that's how I get my candidates, critical points, endpoints. Now, to me, I like the fastest way for me, I do a chart. I do a little a T chart, if you will. I'm going to put all those numbers in. I don't care if they're in order, but if you put them in order, that's fine too. I'm putting all of my candidates and I'm looking at their Y values. If I'm saying, hey, the the absolute max and min will occur here. Well, let's find the y values and we're just going to look at it. It's like if I said, hey, let's find the tallest person in the room. We're going to line everybody up and look. Okay, find the shortest person in the room. I'm going to line everybody up and look. So that's what I'm going to do. So if I plug in negative 1, again, you don't have to show you plugging in. You can get those values. If you need to write more, do. If I plug in negative 1, up into f of x, so that's going to be 3 minus negative 4, da, da, plus 3, so that's going to be 7. 0 is an easy one, that's going to be 0. 1 is pretty easy, negative 1. 2, 3 times 2 to the 4th is 16, 48, minus 4 times 8, 32, so that's going to be 16. And then I go, all right, well, I can see that you're going to have, f is going to have an absolute max what is the max of 16 at x equals 2? And f has an absolute min of negative 1 at uh, x equals 1. And that's the candidates test. Using the candidates test for absolute extreme. All right. Let's try the next one. Find the absolute extrema for this piecewise function. So the piecewise function, I have to check it out. It seems a little weird, but I have to consider both things. Now, finding the derivative, you do have a closed interval because look at the interval of x's. It's closed one, negative 1 to 5. So you do have a closed interval. It's asking for absolute, so candidates test. So f prime of x, you just have to do it twice, is going to be 2x for x. And I kind of sometimes shorten this. I do it with interval notation, a little less writing. And then this has a derivative of negative 3, and that's from 2 to 5. So is f prime ever equal to 0? Well, the only possibility is with this one, and I can look at that and say, yeah, that's going to be 0 at 0, which is in my interval. So I could possibly have an extreme there. But again, my derivative is, uh, let's think about the derivative. Is the derivative undefined? Is the derivative undefined? Well, where would I have an issue? I would have an issue at 2, wouldn't I? That actually should be a hard bracket there. Uh, because look at the derivative. The derivative from the left would be 4. The derivative from the right would be negative 3. So your derivative is undefined at x equals 2. So there are my candidates. I always like to write my candidates because a lot of times with AP, they give you a point for identifying the candidates. So I like to write them out. So I have my two critical points. 
zero and two, I have my endpoints. And now let's make my chart. And I'll put all those guys in there. And what do I have? Again, I make sure I plug into the right equation. So for negative one, I plug into x squared, which would be one. At zero, I'd plug in and I'd get zero. At two, I'm still plugging into this one and I would get four. And at five, I would plug into this one and I would get negative eight. And once again, I have eyes. I can look for the highest y value. So my absolute max, I have an absolute max of four at x equals two. And I have an absolute min of negative eight at x equals five. And those are my absolute extrema. Now notice, uh, I didn't do one like this uh, on here, but you can, your absolute max can occur in more than one spot. Meaning if I had a picture, and I'll just kind of draw it over here, and my graph went, graph went up and then up to this same spot, my absolute max would be, of course, this value, and it would occur at two different x values. So that's, that's definitely a possibility uh, in, your, in your answer. So I just wanted you to be clear that the absolute max or min could occur in more than one spot. So just to sum it up, now that we've talked about both, I just want you to be very clear on what you need to do to justify. Um, when on the AP test it asks you to justify a relative or local mens, these two you are going to justify mo most of the time, nine times out of ten, with the first derivative test which of course means does the first derivative change from positive to negative or negative to, posit uh, negative to positive? Yeah, uh, you could technically do the second derivative test as well, but majority of times you are going to be doing the first derivative test. Now with that being said, if you're, if you're justifying with the first derivative and the derivative has to change from negative to positive or positive to negative, these will only occur between endpoints. Your endpoint will never be a local because you can't justify how can the derivative be changing from side to side if you are at, a, at an endpoint. So that doesn't make sense. When you are doing an absolute max or min, okay, absolute, you need to, of course, you need to check the endpoints and the critical points because that's where your absolute will occur. Now, how do you justify those? You're going to justify absolutes like we just talked about you're going to have one of two things. You're either going to do the candidates test. Now, when do you do the candidates test? The candidates test is when you have a closed interval. Okay. Um, and, of course, you have, and looking for absolute. And then the other possibility, and we're not going to deal with this one today, so don't worry, or a verbal justification. And you're going to do a verbal justification, uh, proving high or low. That's kind of when you have, there's, you either have an open interval or sometimes uh, with the candidate says they don't give you, they give you a graph or they give you something where you cannot plug into the function. So you have to, uh, you don't have enough information to do the, the candidate's test. So you have to do a verbal justification when you cannot do the candidate's test and you're going to have to prove the high or low. But again, we'll, we don't worry about that one just yet. It's a little bit harder, uh, but we'll deal with that a little bit later. So just to make sure 
that you understand the difference. If you look at this graph, then of course you see this guy would be an absolute max. I looks like I have an absolute min. Those look about the same height to me. So those would be an absolute min and an absolute min here. But I do have some locals. Okay, that's a local min. And again, I say local, relative, same thing. Here we have a relative or local max. And people always ask, well, would this one be considered a local max as well? Yes, could you use the first derivative test on it? Could you prove that the first derivative is changing negative to positive? Yeah, uh, what am I doing? Positive to negative, hello. Um, yes, so that is also a local. And in the same way, is this guy also considered a local min? Yes, because the derivative is changing negative to positive. Um, so that's, that's true too. So um, you certainly, if a question is asking, asking you to prove uh, locals, yes, an absolute can be a local. So good luck with that. And uh, really, really, really practice this homework because super, super, super important. All right, peace out.